Hello everyone, and here we have John Swallow, the former Attorney General of Utah, and we are going to talk about some of the current news that is going on with crypto. We see that everyone is looking to invest in crypto, but there are some issues also that we have seen in the news. Today we have the case of Sam Bankman Freed, where this company lost upwards 11 billion and are being sued right now by so many celebrities. All right, John, so tell us, what is a requirement for being found guilty on court? If it's a matter involving a financial crime or a hate crime of violence or manslaughter or murder, the, the required element of guilt is called guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So it's incumbent upon the prosecutors and government to prove a crime. Whatever crime they charge Mr. Bankman Freed with, they have to find that he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And a jury will be able to make that determination after looking at all the evidence that's presented by the prosecution in the case. Now, it's interesting that you mentioned about uh, the evidence that being, is being presented by and the other side of the case, um, because this man, he literally confessed that he knew that he was committing fraud, and he said it publicly. How can this be taken into court as proof of evidence that he was truly guilty? Right. So under the rules of evidence, there is something called hearsay. We've all heard about what hearsay is. Hearsay is an out-of-court statement that's admitted into evidence to um, support the truth of the matter asserted. What that means is typically an out-of-court statement can't be presented in court to prove the guilt of a defendant. But in this case, you have uh, different rules that allow, there are exceptions to the hearsay rule. And even though I may not be an expert on hearsay per se, um, an admission by a party, um, which he would be a defendant, um, an admission against his interest, would make any kind of statement that he made um, in an interview, for example, something that could be used against him. And I have some experience with this. Uh, you know, as someone who's actually been involved in court quite a bit and who actually was a defendant at one point, I had my lawyer one time tell me, John, you just have one job. Just don't say anything, let me do the talking. And it's true. When Mr. Bankman Freed went on camera and started talking about his culpability in the, in the whole debacle, he really put himself at great risk that the things that he was sharing, the things that he was admitting, could be and would be used against him by prosecutors in a, in a criminal trial. Now, he hasn't been charged with a crime at this point, but he put himself in tremendous jeopardy by making these statements. And the best thing someone can do when they're in trouble like that is not say anything and let their attorney do the talking. Now, when it comes to um, this man, Sam, he was associated with so many other celebrities that were endorsing his products. So what happens to these celebrities? Would they be also found uh, uh, guilty of fraud as well as he did? Well, as in everything, it, whether you are guilty of something depends on what is called mens rea or um, your guilty mind. Did these people, when they made representations, when they endorsed a product, when they supported um, you know, a, an industry or a company, what did they know? Were they on the inside? Did they know that something nefarious was happening? Now, we haven't even proven that anything um, untoward was really going on here. Uh, but certainly, someone who is endorsing a product can't be endorsing a product and saying things that they believe or know are not true. And so, if you're in, in, in this amazing social media world we have today where people who never would have dreamed of being an influencer are now being asked to endorse products, there are specific rules that come into play when you become an endorser, when you give your name, image, and likeness. Rules that are promulgated by the Federal Trade Commission, for example, that require that if you say you use a product, you actually use a product that uh, you have to, in good faith, believe what you're saying when you're talking about endorsing a product. And those rules are in place to protect consumers from being manipulated by people who happen to be famous. So if you are a celebrity, if you, if you do, are under contract to endorse a product, there are certain rules you need to understand and you really ought to talk to a lawyer to make sure that you're not violating those rules and placing yourself at, at, with exposure and great risk uh, while you're trying to earn a living, grow, um, a following and make a little money while you're doing it. Now, uh, all of these many celebrities, they kind of recruited so many investors into the idea of truly believing Sam and his company and what his products were. Um, what about all of these investors? Is there any protection that they can um, have when it comes to these uh, fraud that he committed or um, do they have to just wait for the settlement to come? 
what are some of the ways that they can protect themselves? Well, investors have all kinds of rights. Um, they can engage counsel and, and uh, they can get together as a class, for example. Um, they can um, file their civil lawsuits um, and various, various uh, plaintiffs can work with the same attorney, and again, have a class certification. So there, there are, the government remedy is when the government is able to extract a restitution from someone who's caused harm. Uh, a personal remedy is when an individual plaintiff files a lawsuit to recover damages. Unfortunately, in cases like this, when there is uh, like an FTX issue where values go through the floor, many times there's just not a pot to recover from. There's not an insurance policy that people can mm -hmm. go after in many cases that will satisfy the billions of dollars that are lost in something like this. And so that is why that in most cases, these types of investments are highly regulated, but when they're done offshore, like in the Bahamas, like what mm -hmm. it looks like happened with, with Mr. Bankman Freed in his, in his funds, um, You've got, a, you've got a situation where it almost becomes impossible to ever recover. And then an investor who's lost a lot of money has to really ask himself or herself, is it really worth the legal expense, the legal fees, the cost, the time, the energy to actually try to, to sue to recover a loss when there may not be any kind of a, a pool of money to recover? Now, you did mention that there may not be any money to recover. So what happened with this money? Did it just vanish? Where did it go? Uh, because there were millions of dollars. What, in your experience, um, what can be done in this case? Well, I guess that is what the investigation will uncover. The, the, the interesting thing about a financial um, black hole, as we, as we say, will they'll they will investigate bank records they'll investigate all the accounting they'll they'll try to figure out what actually happened here and then it will be um, up to investigators to decide whether or, or excuse me prosecutors decide after the investigation whether there is any kind of culpability that might lead to criminal charges um, but like I said in most cases um, either the money didn't exist when you're dealing with a, a cryptocurrency for example um, there is typically not a lot of backing. Um, and so the money is built on, the, the value is built many times on speculation mm -hmm. and not on the backing of hard assets. And so it really is a risky investment for people. And I think that's why most people are encouraged not to invest um, with overall exuberance in this type of a, an investment. And unfortunately, a lot of people have lost a lot of money in these, in these types of, of um, investments. I'm not here to criticize the investment. But in this case, the investigation is going to be whether or not Mr. Bankman Freed actually manipulated the value of his company and duped people into investing um, in his platform, which, which then would, would um, become a, a criminal act that, that he would have committed based on what the laws are in the jurisdiction that oversees uh, the, the workings of his organizations. That's true. Then again, all of these investments, they are not guaranteed of giving you a certain amount of return, uh, but it's smart and wise to check on the facts of this investment strategy, as well as to make sure to cons uh, consult with your attorney to make sure that it's the right call um, before going for a certain type of investment like crypto in this case. Um, any last piece of advice that you could give us when it comes to um, looking at all of these opportunities to invest? Well, as my grandfather used to say, who was a carpenter, he, and it's the old cliche, always measure twice before you cut. And when you are making these types of investments, you just need to make sure that you're never risking or investing more than you can afford to lose. And I think that's the best advice I can give to someone. Thank you so much again, John. So there you have it. Be smart about your investments. And we're going to see you on the next video. Bye-bye.